See, it's all about not being an asshole. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Road Review Podcast. This week, Rob and Andy have watched and written songs about Independence Day. Do the Roids have any idea what's about to happen to them? Find out next on the Roy Review Podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Roids Review Podcast. I'm Rob. And I'm Andy. And we are here today to talk Independence Day from 1996, directed by Roland Emmerich as part of our Will Smith block of movies. For no reason. For no reason whatsoever. Because we didn't plan this back in March. Nope, not us. Nope. We didn't think. We weren't doing this five months ahead of time and then going, oh, we try, shouldn't do this. Yeah. <laughs> but we're locked into it now. I don't know if you guys heard, uh, but during the Oscars, Will Smith won. Yeah, it was pretty great. I, I thought that was great. Good for him. Yeah. He deserved the win. It's about damn time. Yeah. Thanks, Lizzo. Nice. Yeah. That was good. See, I'm 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 hip. I'm with it. I wonder if that'll still be hip by the time this uh, goes out. Oh, almost certainly not. Mm. Because we thought of this idea months before we were recording it, and now we're recording it months before it comes out. That's us. Baby. Because we're prepared. Yeah. Cause you can if you fail to prepare, you should prepare to fail. Uh yeah. Life advice with Robbie. They changed the name on me. No, that's just that was that segment. We're past it. Now. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. I, I thought you were uh, changing the name of the podcast. Out. Yeah, I should do a podcast. Life advice with Robbie. Have you ever gotten your wiener caught in the mud? I don't know. What to, I don't know what to do about that. I have take no a shower. Advice. Yeah, take a shower. But like, if it's caught, like oh, what, it's caught, yeah. what's yeah. grabbing it in the mud? Maybe uh, some sort of mole. And if you have a mole, you should go to a dermatologist. If it's a naked mole rat, maybe you guys are having sex. Because yeah, it's should, naked. Uh... Well, I so, tell you. Have you ever seen Independence Day? Uh, I have. Yes, I have. You had? Okay, I'd never seen it before. Yeah, I've I've seen it. Uh, this is probably like my fifth time. And I got to be honest, every time I watch, I'm like, I like it less and less. I, <laughs> I love that it's... you said this is your fifth time. Yeah, I would like I'm as because like you catch it on TV back in the day, and like when I was a kid, of course. That's crazy because like, I've literally yeah. never seen it. Really? I, yeah, I knew I what like it was, was about. This was probably all over like TBS and TNT. And, like, the only part that... of this movie I knew was at some point Will Smith said, "I gotta get me one of these." That's all I knew about this movie. Because at one point, I turned to my partner and I said, is this the movie where Will Smith says, I gotta get me one of these? And then roughly a minute later, he went, I gotta get me one of these. And I went, it is. This is definitely that movie. Huh. That's literally all I knew. And of course, I had seen the gif of them blowing up the White House. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Using miniatures. Looks great. Looks great. The effects in this movie are really good. Yeah. Uh, but this comes out in 96, directed by Roland Emmerich, starring along with Will Smith, Bill Pullman, and Jeff Goldblum. Another Jeff Goldblum movie. Daddy Goldblum. Daddy Goldblum. This is the gold pod. Yep. We're just going to do songs about Jeff Goldblum movies. Yeah, and we just go, uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And we rub our hands together. Yep. When we make people feel uncomfortable, but it's like, he's not doing anything wrong, but we're just like... I don't know if I want to be here. Like you make people feel uncomfortable, but they're also like, "Is this hot?" Yeah, it's like it's like I'm uncomfortable, but it definitely moved. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm I'm at least like 25 percent here. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what else came out in 1996? Uh, you wouldn't believe this, but nothing. Jeez, wow! This was the only movie. The only movie. So uh, this should have won actually... the Academy Award. Uh, by default. Yeah, but yeah. all this won every Academy Award. <laughs> um, this was actually the highest grossing movie of 1996. Did you know that? I didn't think it was that gross. Uh, I'm going to make that joke every time you reference something being the highest grossing movie. It's not bad. It's not a bad joke. Yeah. I mean, I'll run it into the ground, though. 
Oh, hell yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a... Sound that's, effects. Nice. Yeah, that's a, that's a spaceship crashing um, into the ground like uh, in this Ro movie. Robbie Winslow over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the cop dad from uh, Family Matters, the Winslows? That's the one. No, I know who you meant. That actor yeah, from Police yep. Academy. Yep. Who was also a cop. Wow. So when I said wow. cop, I could have just left it there. You could have. Carry on. We're just rambling now. Yeah. So uh, another movie that came out in 1996. It's got the same premise. Mars Attacks. That is a fun movie. Have you ever seen it? I just said you it's just, a fun movie. Yeah. I mean, maybe you saw a trailer. You said that looks fun. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I do. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I used to do when I was a kid and I didn't see a movie because uh, my parents wouldn't let me because it was like rated R or whatever. But like my friends also claim they saw the movie, which I now look back and go, they were probably also lying. Yeah. But I'd be like, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, and I would just yeah, go no. off the trailer. I remember uh, I saw the first Alien when I was like nine because my I think my aunt like rented it and was like, ah, it was fine for kids. Scared the tits out off of me. And then I just lied about the rest of the Alien franchise to my friends because they were <laughs> like, wow, you saw Alien? What was it like? I was like, I described it. And then I was like, and then I saw the sequel and I just made it up. And they're like, that sounds <laughs> awesome. And then like the third one, I was like, and then you'll never believe what happened to the third one. Andy, the there's the not town. an eighth alien movie. Yeah, <laughs> I kept going. I really, I really went. Andy, that. this is fan fiction at this point. The aliens yeah. fucking Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> I was like fucking nine, man. I ain't talking like that. <laughs> I was uh, the aliens were fingering her. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't quite there yet. All right, Twister also came out. Another block bluster. Nice. Um, Joe's apartment. Never heard of it. That's a sequel Who's... to Joe's garage. Nice. Frank Zappa reference. Yeah. Uh, Romeo and Juliet. That is much older than 1996. <laughs> it was directed by, uh, let me see here, William Shakespeare. My God. Yeah. Can you believe that? Is that the... Um... Oh, no, I'm thinking of Hamlet, because there's a Hamlet that was made, and it takes place in, like, modern-day New York. Oh, really? No, yeah. I, I know the Mel Gibson Hamlet. Yeah, no, there was – I, I think it was Hamlet, because Bill Murray plays Polonius. Really? Yeah. Wow, that sounds interesting. And if I'm wrong, uh, I don't care. Hmm. Don't tweet me, Shakespeare nerds. Okay, uh, Matilda also came out. Never saw it. Oh, man, I used to watch that movie all the time. That's with Danny DeVito, right? Yep. And Matilda. Cool. Uh, Independence Day came out this year. Really? You know, I just yeah. saw that for the first time recently. Really? Yo, let's do a podcast about it. That's a good idea. All right, let's do it now. All right, Jerry Maguire came out. Oh, show me the money. I've never seen it. You had me at hello. That's from that, right? I have no idea. I've never seen it. I literally only know Show Me the Money. I don't think I saw it either. Uh, the Rock, starring Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery, came out. The Sock also <laughs> came out. The Block. The Block. And, of course, The Cock. Nice. Who, who are we nice. kidding, guys? Who are we fucking kidding? <laughs> we all knew what this was leading to. Yeah. Uh, James and the Giant Peach came out. I hated that movie. I saw that in theaters with my grandparents. I hated that shit. Really? Yeah. I, I was like, had that get on... this peach out of my face, which is also <laughs> what I say during sex. Nice. Robbie hates produce. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Jack, starring Robin Williams. Didn't like that last, movie either. Last name, Mehoff. Boom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's another movie I saw in theaters. I was like, I don't like this. This is movie. weird. That movie broke my heart when he asked fucking J-Lo out. And she's like, no, you're a child. You're an old man child. And then he ran down the steps. He had a heart attack. And I was like, me corazón. It's funny. I The only thing I remember feeling during that movie was, be silly. <laughs> like, I was like a kid. I saw it in theaters. And I was just going, be silly. You're Robin Williams. Did you know that the director is Francis Ford Coppola? Really? Yeah, he directed The Godfather. Yes, he did. And then he directed Jack. Okay, uh, yes. Versatility. Hmm. 
That's a, that's a pretty big word, right? Yep. That was good. I didn't um, know what to say to it. That's why I just went, hmm. <laughs> The Frighteners came out. I don't know if you ever seen that. Never even heard of it. Spook me real good. It's got Michael J. Fox when I was a kid. I mean, it had it it had him regardless of the time I was a child. I meant to say it spooked me real good when I was a kid. I, I get you. I get you. Yeah. yeah he's not um, in it anymore, though. No, it's weird no. when you now only watch when it. A, yeah. Only when I was a kid, he was in there. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Now it's like Chris Pratt or something. Ugh. Space Jam, right? I'm a baseball player now. Now I'm a cartoon man. Mission Impossible came out this year. Dun, 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 dun. Do you know that that Wa-na-na. theme song is in the time signature of 5-4? I did not. Wa-na. Music. Dragonheart came out. Is that the one with Sean Connery as the dragon? I don't know, but I definitely saw that. Yeah, I remember renting that. For years, I thought I saw Braveheart, but it turns out I just saw Dragonheart. <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> yes, yeah. they are very different movies. <laughs> uh, Independence Day came out this year. I'm going to break you. <laughs> All right. Fucking Bane over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball The Path to Power came out. Is that a cartoon or live action? No, nah, it's a cartoon. Wouldn't it be funny if the rest of this podcast was just you listing things that came out in 1996 and we Let's never got to Independence Let's Day? Let's do it. Dunstan checks in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, what that is. I don't know either. It's a kid it's... with a monkey. It's a kid with a monkey. It looks fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 101 Dalmatians, the live action one with Glenn. Lowe's hanger. I'm nice. Sorry. It's early in the morning. <laughs> it's not early. I don't know. I was recording my song at like midnight last night. Oh, I, I did I, not uh, know that. I, I, I goofed. I goofed with my schedule. Jingle All the Way came out. Oh, a classic. Turbo Man. Yeah, it's not a Tuma. You correctly quoted the movie. I did not. <laughs> Yeah. Along with kindergarten cop. Well, I legit went, I was like, I don't think that was that movie, but I didn't want to correct no. you in case I was wrong. <laughs> nah. Um, oh, Muppets Treasure Island. I like that movie. I used to watch that movie a lot as a kid. Hell yeah. That movie slaps. Biodome. With Pauly Shore. Yep. The Never very same. It. Multiplicity. Starring Michael Keaton. Black Sheep, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore is 96. Holy yeah. shit. Wow. Escape from L.A., Scream, Fargo is a pretty big mo- year for movies. What the listeners don't know is I cut out you listing 200 movies. I'll, I guess I'll have to say them again, won't I? Oh, no. Here we here go. Here we go. All right. Number one. I don't the know. English I- Patient. Nice. Oh, so. <laughs> it's like, oh, hello. Oh, I need some help. Oh, I'm a patient. Uh, all right. Well, that's movies that came out. <laughs> Am I right, though? Yeah, yeah. Um, I got I to gotta say, when I looked up on my streaming services, Independence Day, to find this movie, there are a lot of movies that star Will Smith that start with I. Yes. I, Robot. Because as soon as I, I clicked I, like a bunch of Will Smith movies came out. Like I, Robot, like you said. Independence Day, I Am Legend. I liked I Am Legend a lot. So did I. I liked That's it. a movie oh. I wept like a baby in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I saw that with four other grown men, and we were just sitting there in the middle of the theater just weeping. I mean, sad. Yeah. I mean, we also were Fully okay. Um, <laughs> anything else? So, I Robot, Independence Day, I Am Legend, uh, Pursuit of Happiness. That's not I. <laughs> that's not an I. Uh, that's shit. not an I at all. I guess it's just the three, but that's a lot for someone's catalog. That is Igloo Boy, <laughs> starring Will Smith. Igloo Boy. Yeah. It's like, man, it's cold. It's, it sure is cold in here. Um, Isotope Man. Well, 
Yeah, these are all actual Will Smith movies. Hancock. <laughs> it's almost I. It is. It is almost an I. It's yep. it's not though. That's that's the main yeah. issue. That's yeah, that's where I'm I'm fucking up. All right. Should we get into our rundown of Independence Day before probably. everyone tunes out? Yeah, probably. Because there are a lot of people whose favorite movie in the world is Independence Day. Name one. Uh Barry Onyx. <laughs> you saved the podcast. All right. <laughs> Where are we? What are we doing? Why are we here? You're doing your rundown, baby. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'll run. I got nothing. So, yeah, let's do a rundown, I guess. This is a baseline. Thump, 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 thump. So we open up. It is July 2nd. We see the U.S. flag on the moon. Astronauts read a plaque left by the first three people on the moon. We see grains of sand on the moon move as something passes over the moon, casting a shadow over it. We see Earth. It's a spaceship. It's flying straight towards the Earth. We're in a field. REM is playing. It's in New Mexico at an alien search site. A dude is working on putting as as a little alarm going off. Working on putting. I said putting. <laughs> working on a putting as a little alarm goes off. The dude calls another guy. He gets so excited he hits his head on the top bunk. They say it's a radio signal from another world. The scientists are confused because the signals are coming from the moon. We're now in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. They talk about the spaceship and talk about it being so big. They notice that the spaceship, they don't know it's a spaceship yet, though, is slowing down. They call the Secretary of Defense. The President Bill Pullman is woken up by a ringing telephone call. Like a typical politician, he's sleeping with a child. <laughs> this time, though, it is his daughter. President Whitmore is talking to his advisor when he gets a call from the Secretary of Defense. We see a spaceship flying through space. It crashes into a satellite. Jeff Goldblum is playing chess in the park with Judd Hirsch. Jeff Goldblum wins in chess after his father tries to tell him to take his wedding ring off because he's been divorced for three years. What a loser. Jeff Goldblum rides his bike into the office. He gets yelled at by his boss, Harvey Feierstein, because all the satellites aren't reachable. Two kids are struggling with a TV in a trailer. We meet Randy Quaid. He's a pilot who is spraying pesticide, but he's spraying it on the wrong field. He's drunk. Back at the White House, the president and some army dudes are trying to decide what to do with the spaceship. 50% of the armed forces are on weekend leave. The spaceship should be entering the Earth's atmosphere in about 25 minutes. We cut to Iraq as it looks like the spaceships start touching down. We found out they are tracking the spaceships throughout the world. An army plane has no visibility as it flies through clouds. The clouds clear. It flies into flames. Everyone on the plane is fucking dead. President Whitmore wants to stay in the White House so he doesn't add to public hysteria. The government announces that this is an emergency. Harvey Feierstein instructs the whole staff into the convenient bomb shelter in the basement. Guys at a diner are bullying Randy Quaid, who I found out his name is Russell, who has apparently been abducted by aliens in the past. The aliens pass over the diner. The kids rush out to see what is going on as their trailer is shaking. There's now a girl there. The aliens really look like Galactus from Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. We see a little kid run into a bedroom. He tries to wake up his parents. Will Smith wakes up and asks if it's an earthquake, but they aren't alarmed because it's not even a four-pointer. Jeff Goldblum doesn't go to the bomb shelter. He insists on seeing the aliens. The spaceship comes out of the fog and people are flabbergasted. A police car stops and a thousand cars all crash into each other. The ship approaches the US White House because America. Will Smith is woken up by his dog. He sees his neighbors leaving and assumes they're moving because of earthquakes. Will Smith's son claims he's shooting aliens outside. Will Smith goes outside to get the paper and sees everyone around him outside. He finally looks up and sees the spaceship. David, Jeff Goldblum, has figured out the aliens' plan. They move about six, they have about six hours until the aliens destroy the Earth's major cities. 
President Whitmore addresses the American people and tells them to reserve judgment. David Cole's Whitmore's advisor. They used to be married, by the way. President Whitmore tells the people if they're going to leave, do so in an orderly fashion. Cut to total chaos in the streets. Will Smith gets called into action to fight the aliens. His girlfriend is pissed because he's supposed to be off. She's got a good point as to why he shouldn't go. Smith tells his girlfriend and kid to come stay with him at the base. They do some kisses. There's still absolute mayhem in the streets as David gets to his dad. President Whitmore tells his wife to get out of L.A. David's dad is trying to convince him that going up to the White House is a bad idea. On the TV, we see that some people believe that Randy Quaid was, caught, was actually caught by the aliens. The L.A. police are asking people not to shoot at the spaceship. What is this, 2022? Hilarious. Will Smith, whose name is Stephen Hiller, gets a letter. He is rejected from NASA. How do you get na rejected from a community college? I don't get it. His friend tells nice. him he'll never fly a spaceship if he marries a stripper. <laughs> we cut to his girlfriend <laughs> stripping and no one cares. Another stripper wants to go greet the aliens real bad. David uses some great 90s tech to try and find his wife's number. He uses some satellite to triangulate his wife's position. David calls his wife. He tells her to look out the window. He's right there. They're walking through the White House. It turns out David got into the fight with a president with a while ago before he was the president. David shows that the aliens have hacked the satellites and the clock is ticking down until they do damage to Earth. The alien spaceship blows up the helicopters. President Whitmore evacuates. People are being evacuated from major cities. The spaceships start opening up. They blow up so many buildings. Empire State Building, the White House, Harvey Feierstein. The aliens are destroying everything. This is amazing. Air Force One is taking off and it just escapes the aliens destroying Washington, DC. Steve Hiller's girlfriend and son escape from the explosions and so does the doggy woggy. Randy Quaid is driving his kids and is bragging that he was right for the last 10 years. His younger son pukes. President Whitmore is upset. He could have evacuated the cities earlier. He reveals he used to be a fighter pilot. The first lady's helicopter never made it. It's assumed at this point that she's dead. Will Smith's girlfriend, son, and dog walk into total wreckage. The fighter pilots take off at the spaceship. They fire missiles at the spaceship. The missiles are intercepted by an invisible barrier. All the missiles they shoot are intercepted. As they fly toward the spaceship, they pull all up except for one who flies right into the force field. The spaceship releases smaller spaceships who fuck up the fighter pilots. Harry Connick Jr. keeps calling Will Smith Big Daddy. Harry Connick Jr. and Will Smith are flying together. Harry can't breathe. He takes off his mask and he is blasted by aliens. I guess he's too sexy for life because he is right said dead. Very good. <laughs> Will Smith escapes an alien spaceship by using a parachute. He then evacuates the plane. He's taunting the spaceship and climbs on top of it. He punches the alien in the face and says, Welcome to Earth. On Air Force One, Jeff Goldblum is getting airsick. President Whitmore and the generals are discussing a nuclear strike against the spaceship America. David tells them they can't. His dad goes on a rant about Area 51. The president denies its existence, but it totally does exist. Everyone is shocked when the general tells him he's wrong. Will Smith is dragging the alien through the desert. He sees a million trailers driving towards him. He tries to stop them. Randy Quaid picks up Will Smith. Will Smith wants to be taken to a base. This is seriously how we're all getting everyone to Area 51. We're in Area 51. He meets the weirdo who runs the whole thing. It looks like me in 20 years. A bunch of scientists are trying to repair an alien spaceship from the 60s. Dr. Weirdo invites everyone to see the aliens. They're frozen in carbonite. President Whitmore sort of dickishly tells Jeff Goldblum to help the scientists crack the alien tech. Stephen Hiller arrives at the base with the alien who has apparently been unconscious for three hours. Robert Loggia tells Will Smith that El Toro has been destroyed. Will Smith's wife and the president's wife talk. During surgery, the alien wakes up and kills all the doctors, including Dr. Weirdo. The president tries to talk peace with the aliens. The alien says they can't have peace. He wants all humans to die. <laughs> Hashtag relatable. All the army dudes shoot the alien that killed all the doctors. Bull Pellman saw the aliens' plans after the thing got into his head. They plan on eating everything and then going to another planet and move on just like locusts. David and his ex-wife talk. David is clearly still in love with his ex-wife, and I could not care about any of this. St 
Stephen Hiller takes a helicopter. The president and generals are talking. All major cities have been evacuated. They are getting ready to nuke the spaceship. They launch the nuke. It hits the target. They check to confirm if they blew up the spaceship. Of course, it hasn't been destroyed. President Whitmore pulls back the other planes. They are immediately being investigated by the state of Texas because they abort the mission. Nice. <laughs> Will Smith flies his helicopter and easily finds Jasmine. They do kisses. A doctor tells the president his wife is dying. The president lies to his wife about what the doctor said. They do sad kisses. She dies. David is drunk. He thinks if they just destroy the planet, the aliens won't want it anymore. His dad calms him down. David realizes when his dad tells him not to catch a cold. David is suddenly sober, I guess. He realizes that if he gives the mothership a virus, they can disable all the defenses. Will Smith offers to fly the alien spaceship. It still flies. They gave Will Smith permission to fly it. The president fires his secretary of defense for some reason. The Americans start calling every other country with their plan. They're allowing anyone with flying experience to help them out. Randy Quaid is also going to help. Will Smith and Vivica A. Fox get married. President Whitmore gives a speech to hype up the troops. Randy Quaid has now shaved. President Whitmore is also going up in a plane to fight. David and his dad have a moment. Stephen and Jasmine have a moment. Will Smith wants cigars. David's dad has two cigars left. Will Smith goes the wrong way. And then takes off. David is getting airsick as Stephen flies into space. The mothership starts bringing Stephen and David. They fly into the inside of the mothership. It's huge. All the other spaceships are flying around. They are hooked up to the mothership. David uploads the virus. They shoot a missile at the mothership. It hits the shield and nothing happens. Whitmore takes another shot. It breaks through the shield and hits the mothership. All the pilots start blasting at the ship. Smaller ships start flying out. It's an aerial battle. Stephen Hiller can't pull the ship away. The aliens open the window shield. The mothership opens their primary weapon. President Whitmore fires at it. He misses. They're out of missiles, but Russell Cass, that's Randy Quaid, shows up, and he's got missiles left. He can't fucking wait to blow this shit up. He, there's a launch failure. It's jammed. His muscle won't fire. He sacrifices himself as he flies into the missile launcher in the spaceship. The ship explodes. Back on the mothership, Steve and David smoke cigars. David makes the virus play a skull and crossbones laughing. They shoot the aliens in the office. Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum fly out of the mothership. Jeff Goldblum does a Jurassic Park callback with, must go faster. They blew up the fucking mothership. They show the people from all over the world celebrating. Everyone is cheering. They notice Steve and David on the radar. They do a real cool guy walk with cigars in the desert. Both ladies run out to greet them. They all watch chunks of flying spaceship fall from the sky. The credits roll as the music sounds. A lot like Star Wars. <laughs> it did. Wow, very good. Very, very good, Rob. Thank you. I feel as though I just watched the movie again. In less than two and a half hours. Yes. Yes. So I editorialized a little bit. Obviously, the movie didn't put in that they didn't care about any of this, but I certainly didn't care about Jeff Goldblum and his ex-wife. No. Um, I didn't care about a lot of stuff in this movie. I really enjoyed this. I'm surprised. Honestly. I found this. I found this exhausting. This was one of the few movies that we've watched this podcast that I was able to watch in one take, just one go. I was hooked. Wow, absolutely hooked on this. I love this because for the most part, it was just stupid fun. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know, it's like generic. Like it's it's just like hey, you know you know the deal. Yeah, the aliens come, they kill everybody, and then we kill them. That's and, basically uh, it. Yeah, and it's just uh, not hiding that. But I did like, I liked some cool ideas like um, the president doesn't know about Area 51. I enjoyed and, that, like, yeah. they go there and like these aliens are actually the aliens from Roswell like 50 years ago. I, I was like, okay, that's very cool. That was cool. I mean, I, at first I was like, I can't believe they're actually going to Area 51. And then when they worked that, I was like, you know what? Okay. Yeah, I like they, it. They put a little work into this. Yeah. Also, the guy at Area 51, the, the crazy doctor guy. Yeah. That's the villain in Master of the Skies who, like, laughs and then he farts. I've never seen Master of the Sky. Oh, you're, you're good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the opening title cards and all the title cards, the ones that say, like, July 4th. 
those all looked so 90s and cheesy. Yeah, I mean, it's a cheesy 90s movie for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but like we said, we said before the rundown, the special effects for the most part were really good in this. Yeah, yeah, all the miniature stuff, like the real stuff, it looks very, very good. The only thing that didn't look good in this movie was the dog jumping into the. Yeah, yeah, and some uh, of the cars flying. Yeah, the air. but I was able to forgive that. Yeah, because it's the night. The dog, the dog was funny. Like she was like, there's explosions, and she gets the kid, and then she's like, I forget the dog's name, but she's um, like, Fido, and he's like, yeah, oh, I don't okay, I'm coming. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually wrote. Um, in my notes for 1996 the graphics are really good and then the next line is this was written two minutes before the dog escapes the explosion yeah <laughs> like I literally I was like wow this is really good for the time and I write that and then I see that I was like that was really bad even for 96 so in the beginning Jeff Goldblum playing mm-hmm. chess with his dad Judd Hirsch great casting for Jeff Goldblum's father I agree I agree great stuff uh, their interactions and everything were great um, yes. I mean, they, they had a very good chemistry. Uh, it seemed very natural, Judd Hirsch and Jeff Goldblum together. Yeah. But he's playing chess in the park. Mm-hmm. Cool stuff. And then he just rides his bike into work, and everybody's already there, and they're all in a tizzy. It's like, is this guy just, like, strolling to work whenever he wants? Maybe he's on his lunch break. Oh. Well, isn't it, like, early in the morning? I don't remember it ever telling a time. That's true. That's true. I just assumed he was on his lunch break. I thought it was more weird that he rode his bike into the office. That was true. That was my second note. Was uh, why like, like what have, are you doing? Like a, you tie that up outside. <laughs> Will Smith and Vivica A. Fox are bad parents. Uh, their kid comes into the room, and he's like, "Yo, there's aliens outside," and then it, it starts shaking. And they're like, nah, it's probably just an earthquake. Um, why don't you grab your kid? Hey, listen, you live in, you live in, what do they live in, San Francisco? Or they live out west in Earthquakeville. Yeah, but like, why don't you like bring your kid in where you know where he is? And like, maybe he's not, you know, around things that could fall on him. That's a good point. Uh, I understand. Like, I, you know, I've never been in an earthquake zone. But, uh... I feel like it would never dawn on me to be like, ah, whatever. You'll be fine. It's just like a natural disaster. Like, no, because in California, they like there are people. Like, it's gotten to the point because they have so many earthquakes where a lot of people are just like, all right, whatever. All right. All right. If you're from California, send us an email. Roydsreview at gmail.com. What is your reaction when you get hit with a small earthquake? Good question. Yeah. 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 Tell Andy he's a wrong fuck or tell me I'm a wrong fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And be extra rude about it if you're talking to Andy. Yeah. (laughs) But not me because my feelings will hurt. (laughs) Randy Quaid's eldest son in this movie is the poor man's Keanu Reeves. Was he the one at one point? He's like, do you want to die a virgin? (laughs) (laughs) Did you say that? Yeah. At some point in the movie. That's funny. Am I crazy? Because I think at some point in the movie, like they're like, oh, we could die tonight. Are you sure you really want to die a virgin or some shit? <laughs> I think that I've seen this this kid in other movies that I can't name. Uh, he fucking sucks at acting. Like, and I've, I have no idea who he is. You know what? Here's here's a hot take. Keanu Reeves seems like a great guy. Uh, Keanu Reeves can't act for for shit, and I'm not an actor. That's not a hot take. Uh, Keanu Reeves is made of wood. That's a hot take. Yes, yeah. he's definitely skin and bones. Nah, dude. Take a closer look. All right. Oh, my God. He's Pinocchio. <laughs> oh, good Lord. That explains That explains why in the Matrix he went, I wish I was a real boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I mean, that kid, like, I, f- I forget the line exactly, but he's like, you, you touched the wrong field. <laughs> it's like, cast somebody else. Like, is he hot? Is that the thing? That's probably what it is. Okay. Well, there you go. Me shitting on some random actor. I have no idea who that is, but that yeah. was the role that Randy Quaid was made for. Yeah, because he's he is that guy. Yeah, he's that's like, just him. 
They're putting microchips in your butt. Yeah, one of the, one of the dudes asked the girl, they're like, this could be our last night on Earth. You don't want to die a virgin, do you? <laughs> Which I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real. If I was like 17, like or 16, that's a play I'm making too. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, uh... like at that play, at that point, you make that play. Yeah. I mean, shoot your shot. Shot your shoot. Yeah. Like, we ain't calling family. We fucking. Yeah. Um, Jeff Goldblum has Wi-Fi in a car in the 90s with his big, thick laptop. 90s tech. That's what I called it. Fuck yeah. I just called it 90s tech. (laughs) I don't know. I understand. I'm just poking holes in this movie. I was like, a lot of this movie, I was kind of bored. I was like, because you know what it is? I've seen it. That's fair. And like, I know what's going to happen. I know when the cool parts happen. But I did find a new appreciation for some of the slower parts, like anything with Jeff Goldblum. I mean, he's Daddy Goldblum. You know, he's he's killing yeah. it. It's interesting to see Will Smith before he's he like really blew up. Right. It's funny. Will Smith's not in this movie nearly as much as I thought he was. No, and you know what? If he if this movie was made like now he would not have taken this movie because he's not in it. I know he turned down Django because yeah, the role he was wasn't like, big um, enough. Yeah, I'm not like the star. It's like, all right, man. Yeah, but he's not in this nearly as much as I thought he'd be in it. Yeah. Yeah, he's barely in it. It's more Jeffy Golds. Yeah, it really is. And and the president. Bill Pullman, Bill, yeah. Bill Pullman. Which another guy, not really the strongest performance here. Well, no, he's, uh, you ever see The Sinner? No. It's him. He's like an old grizzled detective, and he's like, "Step at me, mommy." Oh boy! Yeah, like throughout the whole thing, it's re- it's real. That's what weird. he says, huh? <laughs> I'm telling you, watch that show. And, and he says, very... "Step on me, mommy." He doesn't say it, but that's his character. He's like, Stand away. and he's very grizzled. That's what I said at the She Hulk trailer. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that was my my whole problem with the She Hulk trailer. Was remember that scene? Did you see the She Hulk trailer? Yeah. Remember that scene in it when like she like stomps down on the camera? Yeah. Every time I see that, I audibly moan. That's something you want to share with everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the president, though. He's, I think uh, this is coming out after She-Hulk's already out anyway. Probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, the president um, does a very presidential thing. Oh, by doing given- nothing? Yeah, he's given the vital information that Jeff Goldblum gives him. He's like, yo, uh, they're about to attack. And he's like, well, we better get the fuck out of here. I'm not going to I'm not going to fucking. Tell the whole world. Yeah, we're going to escape. I'll just first. get out of here. Also, uh, let me like pull Jeff, my investments first. Yeah, like Jeff Goldblum does the right thing. He's like, I got to get this information to the man with the biggest microphone. Yeah. in the entire world. And he's just like, well, we better get on my private plane. <laughs> Grab your things, buddy. You know, that's Air Force One, right? Uh, no, no, it was his personal private plane. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, here's a sad point. Bill Pullman now is 10 years younger than our current American president. Bill Pullman is only 70? Yeah. Wow. Because a big point in the movie is that, like oh, people are already criticizing your age because he's considered a young president. But now, in the year of our Zord, 2022. <laughs> our Megazord. <laughs> <laughs> the year of our Megazord, 2022. Bill Pullman is 68 years old. Wow. And that is 10 years younger than our current American president. Yeah. Who eats shit on bikes. Yeah. He's like, I'm nom, standing, nom, 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 nom. standing completely still. Oh, boy. He's like, hey, media. Oh! <laughs> Fucking idiot. Things are looking up. Yep. I remember, when, remember when we voted out that that one idiot and then we got this idiot? <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> well done, everybody. We yeah. fucking crushed it. We fucking did it. Um, I'll say this. The cast is stacked in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy, heavy hitters. I mean, but it's even like the small roles like and I just I'm just saying his name because I like doing the Harvey Firestein impersonation. Yeah, he's great. He's great. But then they have Harry Connick Jr., which also him doing a Jesse Jackson impersonation seems in poor taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, that's also like, eh, it's the 90s. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I was very surprised. I didn't I remember Harry Connick Jr. being in this movie. And when I saw him, I was like, oh, shit. That's, that's, uh, that's my boy. Uh, his name is already Harry. I was going to do our thing where we say, like, you know, Jeffy Golds or Stevie Spiels, but he's already Harry. So Harry Cons. Harry Cons. Or you just take the Y away, you go Harry Con. Or you go, you go full name, Harold Khan. <laughs> the name Harold Khan just sounds like a Pakistani billionaire. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, um, ain't that America? You and me. I, did. It, I think it's actually Hugh and Steve. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a pro-gay marriage song. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's what Pink Houses is about. Yep. I do like, speaking of America, how the British officer, when he gets a call, he goes, it's about bloody time, because the rest of the world was just waiting on America yeah. to come up with a plan. <laughs> yep. Like, I love that, because the idea that America would come up with any competent plan to deal with this is hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> well, 100%. They would sit there and go, okay, first we need to protect our investments. Yep. How is yeah. this going to affect our oil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this movie's very uh It's very nineties like America's the best. Yeah. And everyone's gotta wait for America. Yeah, we're number one, you're number two. Yeah. As in duty. Nice. Yeah. Here's another note that my wife pointed out to me. Uh why isn't anybody crying about um what happened to the like millions, if not billions of people? They never address all those people who died. No, they did. they're like, oh, man, that sucks. Anyway, it's fucking weird. <laughs> like, the only time somebody cries is when the president's wife dies. And it's Bill Pullman just forcing tears out of his eyes. He's like, Ugh! Yeah, I mean, not good. But also, that scene had me dying when his daughter goes, is mommy sleeping now? I was like, <laughs> I was like, what, come on. Are you on. fucking stupid? Don't make me laugh. Also, the girl who plays the president's daughter yeah. plays Anne. Oh, cool. So Arrested you're just going to development. tell me to get rid of that fucking trivia question. All right. All right. Hell yeah. yeah also, no. you, already got one, you already got one of mine when you said uh, Jeff Goldblum does a callback to Jurassic Park. Jurassic Shark. Yep. It's like, yep. Man, that's an old shark. <laughs> it's, it's a megalodon. Yeah, it's, an old, it's a real old shark. Yeah, you know, because I was about—I was going to ask you later who played Bill Pullman's daughter. Yeah, it's Anne from Arrested Development. That's her real name. No, nope. her full name is nope. Anne from that's Arrested Development. Not her Development. full name. I I made the list of options, and then and then I got laughed at uh, because I put Drew Barrymore, and they were like, Drew Barrymore was well into her twenties by the time this movie came out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I was like, I don't know, I, don't, I can't think of that many child actors. Yeah, Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, but that's that's a Elijah boy. Wood. Again, a boy. Um, Macaulay Culkin. Okay. Okay. I do love when the aliens start coming and the cop stops and he looks up and all the other cars crash right yeah. into the back of the cop <laughs> yeah. car. And everybody's like, what is going on in? And they look up. Oh, shit. Now this is New York. <laughs> <laughs> Just another day. I ain't that New York. Oh, yeah. Let me get a fucking slice for a dollar and a, and a fucking and a fucking Coke over here. What are you, what are you, what are you fucking talking about? I'll nice. fucking kill you. Nice. <laughs> um, all right, you know how you know when you're in a control center? Mm -hmm. It's all the bleeps and bloops oh, and yeah. clickety clacks, <laughs> baby. That's all it is, just flashing lights. Yeah, like, okay. Like, boop, 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 boop. Okay, none like, of these machines do anything. They're just like, clickety, clackety, clickety, clackety, click. I'm in. <laughs> I do like the design of the small alien spaceships. I think they all look really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was weird. Well, it's a very action movie, but like at first, they weren't able to kill any, any uh, aliens at all. And then later, they're like using bullets and missiles and they're just taking them out. Like, oh, they, they use the power of friendship. Well, Will Smith punches one in the face, and it was unconscious for hours. Yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> but, like, in all the air fights, it's like, at first, when they sent the first, like, uh, Will Smith's squad. Yeah. They all die except Will Smith, and they don't kill one alien. And then 
later on when the president says like, oh, we got the power of America and friendship and God. And they <laughs> and they kill like all the aliens. They do great. And then he says, I'm back. That's all America needs, baby. Yeah. yeah. America, um, friendship, God and the military industrial complex. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's it. Uh, there's a, a lot of people say, my gosh, in this movie. Yeah. Which I mean, is that's, great. That's a fair reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to be PG-13, so you're not going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> my God. Um, Why did Harry Connick Jr. keep calling Will Smith Big Daddy? I don't know. That's an in, inside joke. He was also, like, cupping his ass. Yeah. There's a little, uh, hey, uh, you know, was Don't Ask, Don't Tell still in, in effect here? <laughs> Like you know, it's I don't I don't have a problem with it. No, me neither. It seems no like problem. you do. It seems like you do, Robbie. <laughs> but like at one point he goes, "Let's kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy." <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. It sounds if, like you're asking to get fucked. It would have been funny if Will Smith's character was like, "Can you can you please stop?" Hey, we've talked about this, man. <laughs> man, you're making me really uncomfortable. Can you please call me Steve? Yeah, <laughs> the name's Steve, man. You know that. Yeah, or like even if you want to call me Hill, like you can call me that, but like, why does it always got to be Big Daddy? Yeah, no, oh, it's because you're giant cock. All right, we're done here. <laughs> uh, all right, so Will Smith talks to Robert Loja, the defense guy or the general, whatever he is, and he's like, "I need to get back to El Toro," and he's like, "Didn't they tell you? Everyone's dead." Yeah, and then he just walks away, and Will Smith's just like, "What?" what? <laughs> he just fucking drops that bomb on him He just bounces like, Didn't they fucking tell you stupid Everyone there's dead Your whole family's dead You're a piece <laughs> of shit <laughs> And your mother's a bitch Whoa Yeah That seems uh, irrelevant Yeah that's why Will Smith was all broken up yeah. Okay it makes sense then That makes sense Yeah I'll tell you what I liked I already said I liked the Roswell stuff Yeah I like that I really liked how the alien talked through the guy that he held up against the glass, this crazy doctor guy. Oh, yeah, that was cool. He was like, release me. I was like, oh, this is cool. Dr. Weirdo. Yeah, Dr. Weirdo, full name. Yeah. First name, doctor. Last name, weirdo. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't, have a, he doesn't have a doctorate. Oh, no, no. Look at him. No. You think someone with glasses could get a fucking PhD? Yeah, what are you fucking... Yeah. Fucking just, just see. Yeah. You know? Come on. Come on. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah. Stop buying your avocado toast and just see. There it is. Full disclosure, Robbie and I both wear glasses. Full disclosure, I've never worn glasses in my life. Full disclosure, we both wear one pair of glasses that we share. We share. I wear the left, yep. Andy wears the right. Yep. <laughs> we have bad depth perception. Yeah, it is hard to get around. So they're talking. They're like, oh, "Well, uh, Steve, uh, you can't you can't marry a stripper." And then Vivica A. Fox is talking to the president's wife. She's like, "I'm a dancer." And the president's wife goes, "Ballet, ballet." Yeah. And then when they get married, Will Smith and Vivica A. Fox, and they're like, "If anyone objects, I was waiting for someone to jump up and go, she's a stripper, <laughs> she's a hua." Yeah, a we Jezebel. can't let a good old, good red-blooded American army man marry some hua. Yeah. A harlot. <laughs> she sells her body for money. Uh, I don't know, man. It's good living. Oh, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. If anyone would pay to see me, I would. I'll do it. If anyone uh, but you would pay to see me. Uh, I understand. I understand. Because you text me a lot like, hey, I'll give you 10 bucks for feet pics. Yeah. And I say lose my number, but also I'll see you for recording the podcast tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's typical conversations between yeah. the two of us. So the doctor at Area Fifty One, Doctor Weirdo. Yeah, um, he says they're just like us. They have the same weaknesses. They're flesh and bone. Uh, they're just like us. They all have half an inch penises. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> um, he looks around the room for people who <laughs> who aren't watching this audio medium. <laughs> it's a great visual joke. But uh, I realized movie. I did it, and I was like, ah, it's only Andy yeah. can see me looking around the room. Guys, just know it was funny. It was funny. Yeah. Um, but 
after he says that, like later on when they kill the alien, the it takes them like sixteen shots to fucking take this thing down. The guy, the guy, the security guy shoots the alien in the face like three times to kill. Yeah, him. like oh yeah, same weaknesses. Okay. Still gonna no. They need to be lit up. You need to light them yeah, up. No, you gotta kill. You gotta kill the shit out of them. Even though it took one punch to knock this thing. One punch. Yeah. <laughs> one punch to knock this thing out for like a day and a half. Uh, I also like the scene where Will Smith steals that helicopter to go save his uh, his girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, the guy pulls a gun on him, and he's just like, are you really going to shoot me? And the guy's like, no, nah, I guess not. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so why'd, okay. you, why'd you put that in? Good talk. Yeah. I mean, I don't really don't have that much more. I did like the line when President Whitmore goes, there's going to be a lot of scared people out there. And his advisor goes, yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. I also like, I did like Will Smith's kid shooting at the spaceship. Yeah, yeah. Like his little toy gun. Reminded me of uh, the Iron Giant a little bit. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum hacked into alien technology with a big, thick 90s laptop. And it just said, uploading virus. Yeah, uploading virus. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. That's pretty on the nose, but all right. He, he cool. went to virus.com. Yeah. Virus.com slash upload. Slash alien. Yeah, slash yeah. A- yeah. Um all right. I I I have some questions. Do you have anything else? Uh my last the last thing I'm gonna say is if they dropped the love story stuff, I would have said this movie was a ten out of ten. Wow, ten out if, of ten. If they cut no no, I'm saying if they cut a half an hour out and cut all the love story crap out of it, ten out of ten movie. Even Will Smith and Vivica A. Fox. Yes. Cut it out. Don't need it. Wow. Wow. Just wow. What about um what about the the first lady's vague injury? That she dies from? Yeah. They're like, oh, we can't stop the internal bleeding. No, I don't mind that because at least it shows early on that someone with of consequence in the movie will die. Yeah. Like at least they went somewhere with that. Yeah. I mean, is she of consequence though? I mean, they're showing the president's wife dying. At least yeah, we're like seeing there's consequence it. in the movie. Yeah, yeah. At least like some some people with more than eight minutes of screen time are dying. Yeah. Exactly. Well, she probably had a little less than eight minutes of screen time. Yeah, but she was pretty important to the movie. Yeah, and it did seem like for a second that uh, Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum were going to die when they were in. They got caught, and then they're like, "Well, we'll upload the virus. They'll kill everybody, and we're, we'll die here." But yeah, and it, it really does help you buy into, the, oh, they might die because we've yeah. already seen the president's wife die. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Um, but I'll get into some questions. Oh, well, sorry. One more note. So no questions. Fuck questions. Oh We're going to ask gosh. them in like a minute. Okay. The soundtrack is very 90s in this movie. See, I, I didn't notice... The score the is uplifting at all times. There's never a scene where it's like gong gong gong. I didn't it's even It's always know. uplifting. Like, and you know, I think I told you off the off the record. But uh, a friend of mine, a friend of ours. Now, I want to stress is, something. You've said a lot of things off the record. So <laughs> is this like is this about Israel or Rabbi, like soundtracks? Rabbi 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 um, so a friend of ours, he was, he was like, Hey, Hey, I've been listening to a podcast. Um, uh, I think it's great. I have one note and I'm like, no, oh, here we go. And he's like, uh, I think you guys should talk more about soundtracks con- considering you guys are, you know, musicians and you know, you're doing your thing with music. And I was like, Oh shit, it's a really good idea. And, uh, have proceeded to not even take a second look at the soundtracks. To movies. I, so that's I, something I, I got to start doing. I barely pay any attention to the soundtracks also. But yes, we should start doing that. Yeah. Um, um, not for nothing, that friend's going to be joining us in two weeks for the Wild Wild West podcast. A wiki wiki wild wild west. Uh, it's true. Next week is Men in Black. All right, we'll see you next time. Yeah, let's do some questions. Hang on one second. Why 
are people still doubting Randy Quaid in this movie? It's like you, can, <laughs> you just look up and you see aliens. Like, we're still calling him crazy. Yeah, they're like this loon. Like, do you see how many people just died from the aliens? Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Questions. Does Will Smith really think the aliens don't want to fight, or is he just trying to convince his wife? Because it'd be very America for them to be like, "God, aliens don't want to mess with us." Yeah. Questions. Uh, isn't it obvious that these aliens are going to attack before Jeff Goldblum like pops that bubble? Like they're all hovering above the most populated cities in and the world, world capitals. Yeah. No, I think they're here for good reasons. Yeah. Wouldn't it be like, man, we should get out of here? This is just to say hello, I think. Yeah. During the invasion, why was there one guy who was still just working in his office? He was just like filing papers away as the aliens were just destroying buildings around him. That's America. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, I could lose my health insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Questions. Uh, so this one's kind of nitpicky not even like a, a negative it's just something i noticed but the doctor in the beginning of the of the movie where he gets a phone call he bangs his head um when he answers the phone he has visible pit stains what's going on with that Questions. how did only that one guy notice will smith was stealing a helicopter I don't know. I guess everybody was like preoccupied. <laughs> one guy I cared. Uh, he looks like he knows what he's doing. Questions. If this ever actually happened, there are no such things as countries anymore, right? Like the world is now Futurama style. Right? Probably. I know that there's a sequel to this movie. Yeah, it came out a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, I wonder if that happens. I wonder. What's in my Wonder Ball? I don't know if there's any way to really find that out. I don't know. Unless we watch the movie. Mm, I don't know about that. That's a good point. Questions. How do Randy Quaid's kids feel in this movie watching everyone else applaud? They're like, we did it. And they know their dad did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, they also seem to have a contentious relationship with their father. Yeah, that's fair. Because he was Randy Quaid. Yeah. Yeah. Want to do trivia? Sure. Trivia. I got six trivia questions. How many do you got? Um, I've got, I think, maybe four now because you, because you fucking ruined one. I'm the best around. All right, I'll go first. Uh, yes, please. I'm pulling them up. All right. The spaceship at the beginning of the movie, they say, is roughly what fraction the size of the moon? One eighth, one half, one fourth, or one third? One third. Nope, it is one fourth. God. Damn it. Uh oh. Uh oh. We say gosh damn it in this house. Well, we're in two separate houses. We say gosh damn it in this country. Ah, you got me. God's not real. All right, what's your first trivia question? That's why that's why you say gosh damn it. Because God's not real. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. I like it. Um, how many real planes were filmed in the air for this movie? Four. One. And it is the biplane that did oh. the dusting. The rest were CGI. Oh. 
Pretty impressive. I just threw out a guess. Pretty impressive. A biplane? That's pretty progressive for 1996. <laughs> Will, S- <laughs> Will Smith's wife wasn't concerned when they got woken up because the earthquake wasn't a what pointer? Five, four, three, or two? I think you said it in your thing. Oh, well, if you were paying attention, you should get this right then. Four. It is four, yeah. So you were paying yeah. attention. I've been taking notes. That's good. <laughs> During the podcast. Yeah. Whatever There's actually a show. Um, I literally just told you. It's a British game show. Have you seen that? No. With Jimmy Carr as the host. And like it opens up and they're like, oh, here's our three contestants or four contestants. And they list a bunch of facts about the four contestants. And then they go and like say their names are like James, Anna, Bill, and Fred, right? Mm-hmm. They'll be like, all right, James, what do we just say Fred does for a living? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really fun. It's a fun show. I would fucking bomb. That oh, yeah, show. I do so bad at it. I watch it. I do so bad. It's only got, It's really good. Oh, it's nice. very fun. I like Jimmy Carr. Me too. Um, the White House interior set was used in what movie uh, released the same year? Is it Beetlejuice? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That wasn't really the same. Uh, yeah, I, was gonna, what, I was like, nope. I'm sorry. Uh, I tried to change it on the fly. The White House interior set was used in what Tim Burton movie? Beetlejuice. I was about to just go, is it, is it Beetlejuice? Batman Returns or Mars Attacks? Uh, Mars Attacks? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Well, uh, it also gave it away that you said the same year. Yeah. And that's also the only other movie with a president. Yep. Yep. Did you know that in Mars Attacks, which was, of course, filmed after Batman, mm-hmm. uh, some executive told Tim Burton, you can't kill Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah. And he was like, uh, I already did. I'll, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it two more times. And he did it twice in Mars Attacks. Yeah, because he played two different characters. Yeah. That's a good movie. Great stuff. Great stuff. I agree. On the news, who does the woman hope the aliens bring back? Jim Morrison, John Lennon, Buddy Holly, or Elvis? Shit. It's either John Lennon or Elvis. Elvis. It is Elvis. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't fucking around. All right. Uh, what was the original title of this movie? Is it Invasion, Space Invaders, ID4? Or aliens, huh? Pretty crazy. I'm going to say ID4. That is correct. Wow. 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 They, they had uh, issues with Warner Brothers in landing the title of Independence Day because they had the rights to that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So it was ID4 for a while. Hmm. Which to me doesn't really make any sense. Independence Day and it's the fourth. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't really. Yeah. yeah. What is the name of the helicopter with the lights that they use to greet the aliens? Is it the Welcome Wagon, the Greeting Gala, the Helicopter, or the Sky Salutations? Helicopter is great. Thank you. Um, welcome Wagon. It is the Welcome Wagon. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really liked Helicopter. Yeah, that's good stuff. Who was the part of the president written for? Was it Bill Pullman? Kevin Spacey, Kevin Costner, or Morgan Freeman? Kevin Costner. It was Kevin Spacey. Wow. I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. On the count of the bad stuff. Yeah. Known all around good guy. Why didn't the president know about Area 51? Or what was the reason they gave? They thought he was too stupid? Plausible deniability? It's too confidential, even for the president. Or they told him about it several times. He just didn't remember. I believe it's plausible deniability. It is plausible deniability. Wow. You know, I just watched a an interview with Sir Bill Clinton. I believe he's knighted. Mm. Um, if, if Bill Clinton's knighted, it's only because Andrew got knighting powers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get shot in the back of the head. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, they asked him about 
you know, all the alien shit that's that's like the government's like, yeah, we don't know. They're like, what was going on with with you and uh, aliens back then? And he was like, I knew that Area 51 existed and uh, we sent a guy there just to make sure there was no alien stuff. And he was like, no, nah, there's no alien stuff. It was like research about like how to slip shit under radar and stuff. Yeah, that's what they want to think. Yeah, he was saying there's no aliens. And I was like, <laughs> my ass. I got, I got one more. Let's hear it. All right. What was the lo- launch code for the nukes? The launch code for the nukes. Was it Zulu Beta 246er, Beta Cuck 359er, <laughs> Alpha Zulu 689er, or Zulu Alpha 986er? Jesus Christ, Robbie. Uh, the first one. Zulu Beta 246er. Yeah. No, it was C, Alpha Zulu 689er. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm a dick. Uh, you want to do some, some songs? Sure do. You want to do some songs? Yes. You want to do some songs? Yes. I guess he can't hear me. All right, I think we're going to get into the songs. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll flip this pick. Andy, you want heads or tails? Uh, I'll go, well... What uh, what kind of song you got going on? A uh, music one. Mm. Is it rock and roll or is it kind of like a ballad? Yeah, I wouldn't call it rock, but I wouldn't call it a ballad. It's, 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 I don't know. Right, just... Yeah, yeah. Let's flip, let's flip the pick then. I'll, I'll go heads. It's tails. Ooh, it's tails, and tails sometimes fails. I'll go first. I will go first because I'm a big boy. Uh. I called my song Mammalians. And the reason it's called Mammalians is you'd be surprised how few words there are that rhymes with aliens. Nice. (laughs) So here it is.
That was my song called Mammalians. I like it. Thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's basically just a song about how the U.S. government, because for some reason it was just the U.S. government who was supposed to take care of this. Yeah. They knew about the aliens. They ignored the aliens for years and years and years. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, we're the only ones who could do this. We have to nuke them. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that's really what that song's about. And like I said, I called it Mammalians because in the chorus, I don't know if you're going to, if it was clear, but it said, uh, we were warned, we ignored all the calls from the aliens. We kept hush and now they crush every one of us mammalians. Hmm. And for those of you who are uneducated, uh, mammalians are mammals. Wow. Yes, because humans are mammals. I ain't involved from no monkey. <laughs> ah, what are you talking about? I ain't involved from no monkey. The earth is 400 years old. Ah, 400. It's not even. <laughs> <laughs> the earth started when America started. Jesus Christ was born in America. <laughs> Our founding fathers, George Washington, Ronald Reagan, and Jesus Christ himself <laughs> yep. founded this country yep. after coming over from America One. Yep. <laughs> America One. Uh, nice. We got him. Nailed it. Uh, I, I don't know. I have nothing else to say about my song. Yes. Uh, well, I like that. I like the instrumental breaks as well. I like that. Thanks. Yeah, I've been playing a lot with the piano, and um, playing the piano, I've noticed, allows me to do is a lot more freedoms to not care. And not, the word care isn't a good term to use, but not worry so much about the guitar parts. Hmm. And it gives me a lot more freedom to, instead of playing like a gug, 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 or a consistent chord progression, I have more of a chance to just play around and play the riff and just kind of, or play a chord and just kind of play around with the chord and with the scale and whatnot with the guitar while letting the piano and the bass do the rest of the work. Yeah. So, you know, just little benefits of bettering myself as a musician and a human being. I don't know about that last part. But yep, yeah, because remember, that's... if you haven't learned an instrument, you're worthless to society. Wow. Just wow. Just like if you have never played a sport, worthless to society. So, Andy, what's your song about? Well, my song is called Target Remains. Because uh, uh, the they store's them... still open. Yep. <laughs> when like they you're... launched the nuke. <laughs> uh, when they launched the nuke at, at the... Target. Yep, at Target. They were like, oh, shit, it's still there. I can't believe we missed it. It's a giant red fucking <laughs> Target. <laughs> the uh, When they launched the nuke at the big old mothership thing, uh, like they were like, yeah, direct hit, yeah. And then they, they were like, oh, shit, Target remains. And the guy said it like four times, like, Target remains. I'm very sad. Target with me. Like, we heard you, Bill. Yeah. Do you even work here? (laughs) So um, uh, I took that, and then it's just kind of about the, uh, you know what, just just play it, and I'll I'll talk about it later. All right. Let's target remains. Do it to it.
like that. I really like the ending there. Thanks. I'm still working on fading out. It kind of still ends like very abruptly. But I think it sounded very good. I'm still learning. That's fine. Uh, I liked well, it a lot. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, it's uh, like the verses are about, I mean, the chorus is obviously they launched a nuke. It doesn't do shit. And then the second, uh, the, the verses are when the president's like, where do you on? And it's talking through the guy. He's like, release me. And then uh, it like gets in the president's head and it shows him everything. And then he's like, they, they go from planet to planet and they, they suck the planet dry. And then they, and then they just run the planet. And, yeah. When, and then, when luckily and, the alien was like, let's tell him exactly what we're going yeah, to do. Yeah. And uh, everybody's like, so is Bill Pullman okay? He's like slurring his words. <laughs> I love that possession. He's like oh, falling all over the place. Like, yeah. oh, yikes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was the coolest part. So let me write about that. And uh, yeah, I wrote it um, like literally as soon as the movie stopped, like the credits started rolling. I was like, I had uh, my cat was on my recliner. I have a recliner. He's sitting like at my feet. And I said to my wife, I was like, guitar me. And she gave me my guitar. And I. <laughs> and guitar I, uh, me, wench. He's like, I'm your fucking wife. <laughs> yeah, she, please. Please don't speak to me like she goes. I will Jeff Jarrett you with this thing, and she blasts you with the guitar. Oh my fucking god! I realized when I said that when you were like, I don't know who Jeff Jarrett I'm, is. I'm lost on that. I was like, okay, let me let me make it a little clear that she then blasts it over your noggin. Okay, is that a, like a wrestling thing? Yeah, wow. he he was uh, Double J Jeff Jarrett, and his thing is he used to hit people with his guitar. Nice. Yeah. Sounds expensive. I mean, they were gimmick, gimmicked guitars, and they were the ones uh, he bought were probably those like super cheap ones you get from like Walmart and shit. Yeah, but Smart. they also make guitars that are meant to break now. Oh, okay. They make guitars so you could like smash it easily and then just throw it back together, so you could do it for like cool effects at a show. I can't imagine really? they sound good. Yeah. Holy shit! The future. Well, um, yeah, and I I was very relaxed, so I wrote like a very like relaxy kind of uh you know six eight time kind of thing and uh yeah i had a good time i had a good time i had a good time, I a good time. i like it i know I, I really did like it uh, i like the ending i like the harmonies uh target remains is also a sex act where i choke the woman out and if she's still alive after i go target remains sweet lord baby jesus <laughs> <laughs> That's a All sex right. joke. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Um, well, you can uh, find our music on Spotify and Apple Music and all that, all that cool stuff. Also, you know what? You know that what act is also saying? called the Trevor Bauer. He's 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 uh, continuing. He's not stopping. Is that a prop? What? I don't understand. Um, I'm just I'm uncomfortable because mainly because I'm erect. You are um, lucky. Yeah, this is the I'm first check time your in privilege. Years. <laughs> the first time in years. Um, I've never had blood flow to my penis. Jesus, it's just like it's just like a shriveled. Husk. Yeah, it's just like a shriveled, like black, like thing. Guys, if you like, um, what you're two guys, if you guys, if you guys like two guys talk about dicks and also writing songs about movies. This is the podcast for <laughs> this you. This is it. This the is Dicks it. and Movies podcast. Yep. There were um, no hogs in this movie. We didn't talk about hogs at all. That's true, but it's Daddy Goldblum, so we know he's true. fucking yeah. down to his knees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, what are we fucking doing? Um, you know Next what we week? should start doing? Oh, what um, should we start doing? Is we should start saying, hey, leave a five-star review. Oh yeah, we should start doing that. Okay, yeah, like, maybe hey, next yeah. maybe next time we'll start telling people to leave a five star review. Yeah, not on this one because no. of all the dicks. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, if you want to, you can leave a five star review on this one. And um, honestly, you can also write whatever you want. That's true. Yeah. So leave a five star review and then talk shit. Yeah, that's how you really feel. Yeah, engagement's great. I was engaged before I got married. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, what are, what are we doing next next week, Robbie? Next week we're doing men in slacks. Yep, men. 
Here just... come the men in slacks. Dudes wearing khakis. No, yeah. we're doing men in black. Yeah. Just the first one. Just the first one. Maybe we'll revisit the franchise at another point. But... Maybe. I'll be down for it. Yeah. And then after Men in Black, we're doing a wicked Wild Wild West. Yes, we are. With Kevin Klein. But more importantly, Will Smith. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Whole, that's right. Yeah, well, that's, that's starting our Kevin Klein block. <laughs> <laughs> Name another movie. By Kevin Klein? Or yeah. with Kevin Klein? A Fish Called Wanda? Fish Called Wanda. Okay, name another one. Uh, don't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, the Bob's Burgers movie. Ah, uh, there you go. There you go. Um, hold on. Let me go to his IMDb page, and then you can ask me again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Then I'll know. Then I'll know. Well, uh, are you actually going to the page? No. Oh, okay. I'm not going to sit here just listing Kevin <laughs> Klein movies. Um, uh, what was it? Gonna, oh, you can find our, uh, I already said the music thing. Spotify. Apple Music. Um, Deezer. Uh, Deezer? Yeah, I don't know. That's a fucking streaming website. I have no idea what it is. Oh, we're on it. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Um, Robbie, where can they find you on the social media? Oh, they can find me at Robert Corridor on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find the Roids on Instagram. The underscore Roids. That's both of us. Yeah. Now, uh, are you putting the music that we record for this podcast on Bandcamp. I do. Wow, that's interesting. Yes. I wonder if the viewers uh, would like to listen to our, you know, music that we recorded for the for this podcast. Well, yeah, they could um, download it on Bandcamp. Check it wow. out. We don't have a Patreon, but if you want to support the podcast a little bit, you could download all the songs we put on the podcast on Bandcamp, theroids.bandcamp.com. Yeah. Yeah. Slash boobies. Slash, <laughs> yep. Uh, you can find me at Andy J- Jafaris. Please don't put slash boobies. <laughs> no, don't put slash boobies. That'll take you somewhere else. It's slash titties. Nice. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Andy Jafaris on Instagram. And uh, that's about it. Um, the roids, uh, the underscore roids on Instagram as well. Yeah, we're also on TikTok as just the roids. That's true. We're on the, the Tic Tac. Yeah, we're millennials on TikTok. Yep. Yeah, we're old. Yeah, we're cringe, right? Yeah. That's what they say. We're cringe. I guess. I don't know. Isn't it cringe worthy? That's, that's me being an old bitch, right? I, I guess, man. I think that's cringe. You're it's looking cringe worthy. Too, you're thinking too much into it, my guy. Yeah, that's why I'm, 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 an old, think, I'm an old bitch. You're thinking too much about it. What I'm being is cringe worthy. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time. Have we have we covered all the socials? Twitter, so. Instagram, find us on Spotify, five star uh, reviews, porn porn hub. Oh. Right, we have a profile on there, right? That's where we write we write songs about porn movies. Wow, how do they get that big? <laughs> yes, I Go. would like to increase the size of it. <laughs> In and out and in and out and in and out. <laughs> oh, it's Squeezebox by The Who. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Going to the search bar, typing in titty. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next week for Men in Black. Men in Slacks. Uh,